Wait, so do you want me to look at the camera or do you want me to look at you? We are here with my friend from like elementary school. I've known this guy forever. He doesn't remember. But we, we, we met in high school. We've been playing like a ton of board games. This is Jason. I'm Jason. Hello. Yeah. And he's here to talk about his top five games. And we're going to talk about some BG rankings, how they compare and whatnot. The reason why I collect them as my top five games is if I was doing some massive call of my collection and I could only keep like five games. A lot of them have a lot of replayability. Like I'd yeah. probably play them again and again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first game that we have on the list is Decrypto. So... The reason why I enjoy this game a lot is because it's a team-based game where basically each team has a set of four words in front of them and you use the four words to give clues and your clues are like three digit numbers like one, two, three. Basically you give clues corresponding to the words but only your team has the word and the other team is trying to intercept those clues and you use the same words every time. So for example, the first word you're or first round, your team might get one, two, three. Second round, your might, team might get two, three, four. And the other team is trying to figure out which clues correspond to which words. It works with non-gamers very well too, but it's Definitely. gamey enough that I like playing the game and there's a lot of strategy. And it's fun because even with people who don't game, and especially with like people you know pretty well, you can make a lot of kind of inside jokes uh, or <laughs> references so people will get the clues easier. All right, give me a sec, Daniel. Daniel just called. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can restart. This is good because you can put non-gamers on gamers' team, so you can kind of balance out the teams really well, kind of like code names. Yeah. Hey, are you coming? Okay, yeah. Wait, crypto. so is he coming? Yeah, he's coming. Where was I? Especially if you keep playing with, like, different people, you got to see how people think, like, what they are thinking when they're giving the clues. Yeah. yeah. How you can, like, mess with other people, too, if they're on the other team. Yeah. To try to, like, throw them off. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you could have like the same word, and then if you swap like one person on each team, it's gonna change a lot. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, you can choose to play with a timer or without a timer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so remember, no particular order. This is the, the second game. So the second game I really like is One Eye Ultimate Werewolf. So One Eye Ultimate Werewolf is just one of like a bunch of social deduction games that I've played throughout the years. It's really fast, and you can, despite it being really fast, there's a lot of depth to the play. There's some really crazy stories I remember being played. With the expansion, uh, Daybreak, there's a role called Village Idiot where uh, if you've played like any of these social deduction games, everybody gets a hidden role. But his role is at night, what he does is he rotates everybody's players once clockwise or counterclockwise. But the thing is, it's not he must rotate, it's a may. Even if you're like a villager on the villager team, you have to lie. Like you you cannot just tell the truth because you're on such a short time. Generally we play with like five minutes of deduction. Okay. Um, or else it just goes on forever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're on such a short time that you have to kind of lie and bluff your way to getting more information out of people. Because if you just tell this truth from the get go, it doesn't work. For example, if everyone tells the truth and a werewolf just like wiggles in you just yeah. lose it's also pretty cool because you can like you have you have that time crunch you know and normally werewolf you don't have that time crunch and yeah. normal werewolf slash mafia takes like an hour and you need like a, a dm a storyteller this you just use app oh i think one of the worst feelings in that is getting killed off first uh, ah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah you don't really have anything to do you, like yeah. the werewolf or mafia uh, mm -hmm. whatever version you're playing just kills you off and then you're sitting there for an hour. Yeah, it's always like that, yeah. You looked at me funny, you're the bad guy. Yeah, and yeah. what's even worse is sometimes like, you know, in Werewolf and Mafia, people will be like, oh, uh, you're just always the guy who gets killed first, so we'll just yeah. kill you first anyway. And then, okay. For one night, like, there's no werewolf killing phase, right? Because yeah. it's only one night. Yeah, it's only so one that's night. the best part about, I think, uh, that's the biggest advantage it has over vanilla. Yes. Because although a lot of, a lot of these newer social deduction games like Secret Hitler or Resistance don't have... Uh, that kind of player elimination, really. Yeah, this guy. Okay, so this is the third game in my top five. Uh, we're starting to get into the more little meteor games. Uh, but basically, this is Roll for the Galaxy. For me, a lot of, for some reason, there's something visceral about rolling dice. Like, it just feels good to roll dice. So, so uh, that's kind of, that's like a little bit of the reason why I like this game. Disregarding that, I really like engine builders. Um, I mean, I wouldn't play them all the time, I think, but I really like the feel of a like good engine and mm -hmm. 
roll for the galaxy is an engine builder game. And you get like dice cups. Yeah, and so you get dice cups yeah. to roll and yet. Yeah. yeah. You really have to pay attention to what other people are trying to activate and plan accordingly so that you get the most efficiency out of every round. Yeah, I've yeah. only played this game in like one sitting. We played like two or three times with our friend Bender. It's so addicting. That's just so fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it's, it's just so fun. Most of the games I play are probably a lot longer than this, but this game takes like, if you have it down, probably half an hour to an hour. And I like rolling dice, so. Me too, yeah. All right, so starting to get into the uh, yes. really heavy games. Yes, uh, yes. So one of my favorite games is Food Chain Magnate. This is one of the heavier games in our collections, probably. Not just rules-wise, but in terms of decision space. When I teach this game, I make sure to give opening moves because if you mess up your opening moves, you're not playing the game. What I really like about this game is the theme is so cool. You don't really see a lot of games with this fast food burger yeah, or yeah. pizza chain and it's just like yo i have my restaurant here i have my drive-in drive-in drive-through drive-through i have my chef he cooks pizza someone buys them and make a ton of money it's very satisfying there's several reasons why i like this game the first one again is the decision space is really good i really like how my decisions feel like they have weight to them like usually throughout the game even though it's pretty swingy like you can identify places where you probably made like the wrong move mm. and that's really cool to me even at like five players like even though there's a lot of player interaction going on mm -hmm. you can still be like i probably should have changed my decision yeah. here or i should probably should have done something a little different second reason why is because i think the theme integrates with the mechanics is really cool and it's done really well uh versus like a lot of the other games we play the management structure like you have your managers and they have other people under them it just feels very yeah and corporate. then it's cool yeah yeah the board i know like the supply and demand mechanics don't really make sense but the thing is like even with that supply and demand mechanic it feels like very real in the sense that people are trying to compete with your prices and stuff to try to fulfill that demand like to figure out which or which franchise i guess mm. The customers are going to it feels very ah uh, yes thematic the yes. price slashing yes yes, yes. Very price fun. slashing yeah. wars versus you know quality yeah. or you're like really scummy and then you make sure everyone else doesn't like have pizza and then you just make pizza like double the price oh yeah basically <laughs> yeah. like if only one person is fulfilling the supply then yeah you can make your price as high as you want yeah. yeah but yeah i think the that kind of supply and demand is a very cool mechanism that they implemented yeah this is the final favorite game and you know what we have Daniel here, actually. He just walked in. He clearly knows more about Root than I do, so we don't discuss why. Yeah, if you look at the footage, uh, I walk by the window right there for uh, Food Chain Magnet. So, uh, structure this. Uh, what the hell are we even doing? This is the final game in the top five. Uh, I'm inclined to say this is probably my favorite game just because it satisfies like a lot of my tastes, I guess. In terms of area control, I really like asymmetrical area control. I like it when we have different races to play uh it just adds to the replayability for root i don't know there's just something about root where the asymmetry just works and it plays very smoothly like a lot of the area controls we play are like what two plus hours um at least right true enough like, yeah. and that's on the lower end and those are like the simpler ones whereas root is i would say fairly complicated but like a four player game of root takes about two hours including setup and takedown We've had games that are like so, 90 minutes and whenever it's just kind of just going. Yeah, so the other reason is I like politics enough, but this game has both politics and it feels gamey enough that I feel like I have some control over the space of what's going on. Yeah, the point incentives are yeah. really, uh, they really make sense when, you know, getting everyone to like fight over shit for each other, you know, it's just, it's all, like the scene that Root sets up is like the perfect playground to give people an excuse to say, see that guy? He's winning. Hey guys, beat his ass. Funnily, the biggest complaint about this game is that there's a lot of king making. But for me, honestly, that's what makes the game for me. Like that is the whole point of the game. If you don't like king making, don't 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 play the game. Once people play the game enough, so I probably played this game 20, 30 plus times at this point. And like that's for such a like a big game like this, that's crazy. Like, well, it's also easy to do that. So sure. That's true. Like, even some party games I haven't played that many times. So, you know, the fun part is trying to convince everybody at the table who the leader is. Because <laughs> it's not always clear who the leader is. Like, just because they're at, like, 20 points, everybody else is, like, 5, 10 points behind, doesn't mean they're actually the one in the lead. I've seen games where the guy's in the lead and he just stays at 20 points because 
We don't let him do anything, basically. <laughs> because you have ulterior motives, because you want to win, right? You try to say, oh, we need to check them in this specific way. So it gives you the opening to win. I think that's the most fun part of the game. And making sure that, you know, other people aren't doing the same thing you're trying to do, you know, leave themselves an opening to win. Yeah, some real sneaky, sneaky shit. I would attribute that more to the fact that, like, I think the game's actually so well balanced that, like, everyone, if they know what they're doing and they're all actually playing for points, they should be at a point during the end game to be able to win. Everyone always has some avenue. You know, like, whatever it's be, oh, screw, I'm gonna go for Dominus, I'm behind points, or other guys is like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm like, I'm at like 24, 25, I can just shoot ahead in five points right now. Like, just, there's always some shit you can do that's just like, look at me, I'm a threat, ha ha ha. Also, since, you know, I have all the expansions now, we have eight races to pick from, so... Replayability! I'm always discovering, like, new ways to play, like, based on who's put, like, what factions are playing and who's playing the game. If I was just going to, like, pick my favorite game of the five, it would have to be Root. Alright, so... Honorable mention goes to the estates. So, I think the only reason why uh, this wouldn't make my top five, and if it was like a top six, I would add it in, is because Food Chain, it basically contests Food Chain's spot. Food Chain's theme is just so well integrated, and I really like that in the game, whereas this game, um, let's just say the theme is kind of tacked on. The auction mechanic is really fun, seeing how far you can push people to bid for something. Uh, and it's also interesting in the fact that on your turn, it's very simple. All you do is you pick up a piece and put it up for auction. Oh. No All right, I guess cool. I also could have brought the other... Uh, it's fine, whatever. I guess in this case, there's like four big different itches, right? Mm -hmm. And then one of them is filled by two. So... Sounds like a nasty you got here. <laughs> so, wrapping up your list, uh, you mentioned before in uh, the intro of the video that these are all 10s on BGG. Uh, except food chain, yeah. Except food chain, but food chain still makes your top five. Yeah. So let's let's talk about that. Like, what what's the difference there? I mean, really, all it is is like how subjectively I like it. So I only have four tens on BGG. Yeah. So to make a top five, I need a fifth game. I reserve tens for games like I really liked and played a lot, and food chain I haven't played that much. I see. I see. Uh, there's a lot of games I haven't played that much. Uh, maybe if I played some of those games a bit more, they'd beat out food chain. Mm -hmm. But for now, I think just because Vuchin has that theme and mechanic, uh, I like that. Okay. Uh, I, I put it on the top five because I like it that much. Yeah, we were talking over chat yesterday that like BGG 10s are kind of weird, but because who is always, always, always down to play a game? It's okay. like very rare. Yeah. I mean like lifestyle games like Go and Chess, like yeah, you're always down, maybe like Magic Gathering, you're always down to play them. But like even like one of my favorite games, Twilight Imperium 4, like I'm not always down to play it. Like I won't play it two days in a row. This is a BGG's rating scale, okay? okay? So, a 10 is outstanding. You will mm -hmm. always enjoy playing it and expect yeah. this will never change. 9 is you will always enjoy playing it. Mm -hmm. As in, it might change like, if you keep playing it. I see. I can't even think of a 1. Far uh, Shiny uh, Dice? Yeah, maybe. Or like, there's like I some like that. game, or like some game I heard. Oh, we're gonna demonetize for that, Frick. Is one like burn it, burn it? Yeah, one is like it shouldn't exist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're always down to play with whoever, but if you're playing like a hard game with newcomers, is that still a ten? Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, because a newcomer is just someone who's not yet played the game a bunch, right? So just play with them more, and then bam. Yeah, but then the first time you play, is it still a ten out of ten like experience? Is it still fun in that sort of sense? I don't so, think. So. I don't think that's. that's not the what right they're going for. It. Yeah, that's not the right way they're framing it. Okay. They're saying that. With like the given, right group. Yeah, like given given the game, yeah. and someone asks you to play, mm -hmm. given no other information, mm -hmm. would you always be willing to not to play? But like Pandemic Legacy, like once you beat the game, you can't play you're it. not gonna play it again. <laughs> yeah, so this is why I think I think BGG's yeah, ratings kind of, are kind, kind of, weird. of weird. Yeah. So do you think BGG <clears throat> ratings favor shorter games? Because you're all you're more likely to be always down for a shorter game. Because like MTG, yeah, right? people yeah. are like almost always down to play, so, it, but it's like 20, 30 minutes. Again. I think I think BGG's ten is reserved basically for lifestyle games. Yeah. Maybe party games. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe party games. Okay. Like maybe code names. Like I can see people rating that a ten. Yeah. But obviously, if you look at if you look at BGG's top rankings you don't see lifestyle games or you don't see chess on BGG. Yeah. But it's like people who play chess don't go on BGG. That's that's true. And go. <laughs> you still don't see like magic. 
Yeah. Or, or like very high. Magic's not yeah. even top 100. Or uh-huh. I don't even know. But it's where like it the is. hardcore Magic guys don't go on BGG. They go on Magic websites. That's true. Yeah. Like you said, like Pandemic yeah. Legacy. That's not. Okay, I can see Twilight Struggle actually. I can see that. I can see that actually. And that because is a game it is a we lifestyle have, we have game. Played, yes. That I I can see people really like playing it oh over God, and over. That that's a story for oh another man, time. That's a punishment. Uh, oh my God, please no. Yeah, sure. Like, say I don't play games that much, but I still have a favorite game. Well, it's like I'm not always always down to do this. I'd much rather go fishing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So it's like I don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that rating scale is very good. Before a game comes out, a bunch of people will rate it a ten because it's like, for example, right, Root. So the Underworld expansion before it came out had a bunch of tens. Has anyone played it? No. <laughs> uh, Wait, what would a printer play? Oh, well, it looks cool. I mean, sure, but okay. Let's give another example. Okay, Frosthaven. Mm-hmm. If you look at it right now. Then has a bunch of tens and ones. Oh, ones. Okay. The reason why? <laughs> because it's because it's because a bunch of people who like Gloomhaven rated it a ten just because it's the same guy, it's mm-hmm. the same genre, and you know, spiritual sequel or whatever. A lot of people rated it a one because they're like, no, we need to balance out the tens. <laughs> <laughs> Just not do some fucking Metacritic shit and like Rotten Tomatoes shit. Oh my like, gosh. Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think review bombing is. Yeah like a known practice quite a common practice at this point but Jesus I, I, <laughs> so like companies pay off people to like go review bomb other knows? games I have no Ooh, idea. savage I, I think I think that's I think we covered the the wackiness of BGG ratings your top five games plus the states okay well this has been Jason's top five plus discussing BGG ratings thanks for watching guys yep. we'll have Jason on more videos definitely his top five in a year if they change if they change <laughs> yeah we'll see about that